This video is about writing ionic equations. We're starting off with what's called a formula equation. This is what happens when aluminum is put in nitric acid. We get hydrogen gas and aluminum nitrate. The first thing that we must do is to balance this equation with whole number coefficients. We can start out by putting a 2 in front of this aluminum here. To balance the aluminums, we put a 2 in front of this one. We have 2 times 3, which are 6 nitrates on the right, so we must put a 6 here to give us 6 nitrates on the left. Now we have 6 H's on the left. In order to get 6 H's here, we have to put a 3 here. So this equation is now balanced. To write an ionic equation from this, we start bringing down the aluminum. Since the aluminum is a solid, we don't change it. HNO3 is aqueous, so we must dissociate it into ions. We go to the ion table and we find the ion H plus and the ion NO3 minus. Now we bring down the H. Its charge is plus, so we put a plus sign there. HNO3 is aqueous, so that means both ions are aqueous, so we put an aqueous by the H plus. Now we bring down the NO3s. It has a minus charge. And since HNO3 is aqueous, so is the NO3. Notice there's a big 6 in front of the HNO3, which means there are 6 H's and also 6 NO3's. We must put a 6 here. Now we put the arrow. There's 3 H2 gas. Gases we don't dissociate. We just bring it down the way it is. Then we put a plus sign. Aluminum nitrate is aqueous, so we must dissociate it into ions. So we go to our ion table and we find the aluminum ion Al plus 3 here and the nitrate ion NO3 minus here. We bring down the aluminum. We put a plus 3 sign by it. Notice there's a big 2 in front of here, so we have two aluminums. Because this salt is aqueous, we have to put an aqueous here. Now we bring down the NO3s. It has a minus charge. Notice there are 3 times 2, which are 6 NO3, so we must put a 6 here. And don't forget the aqueous. This form of equation is called the complete ionic equation. Notice we have 6 NO3s on the left. It's exactly the same on the right, 6 NO3 minuses. It does not change at all. An ion which does not change at all from reactants to products is called the spectator ion. Now we can write what's called the net ionic equation. In the net ionic equation, we leave out the spectator ions. So we're left with these two things on the left. We put the arrow. On the right, we have 3H2 and 2Al plus 3. first equation without any individual ions is called the formula equation. Now we have all three forms of the equation. In the second equation, the complete ionic, each aqueous substance is dissociated into its individual ions. In the third equation, we leave out the spectator ions. That's called the net ionic equation. Don't forget, you can always check for numbers of atoms to see if they're conserved and for charges. For example, in the net ionic equation, we have two aluminums, two aluminums, six H's, three times two is six H's. The total charge on the left is zero plus six, and on the right, zero, three times two is plus six. We can use ionic equations to write rate equations. Don't forget that rate is the change in the amount of something over change in time. So if we go back to our net ionic equation, we notice that aluminum solid is on the left. So aluminum is consumed. For solids, we can measure the change in mass. So one rate equation could be the change in mass of aluminum over change in time. Going back to our net ionic, we see that H plus is aqueous. For aqueous ions, we can measure the change in their concentration. So another rate equation could be the change in the concentration of H plus over change in time. 
since H plus affects the acidity, as H plus goes down, the substance will get less acidic. That can be expressed by the pH. So we could also express the rate as the change in pH over change in time whenever the concentration of H plus changes. If we go back to our anionic equation, we see that H2 as a product is a gas. Therefore, we could collect the gas and measure its change in volume. So another possible rate equation would be the change in volume of H2 over change in time. Aluminum plus 3 is an aqueous ion, so we could measure the change in its concentration. So another rate equation could be the change in concentration of Al plus 3 over change in time. NO3 minus is exactly the same on both sides, 6NO3 minus, 6NO3 minus. That's a spectator ion, so it does not change at all from the beginning to the end. So th there would be no change in the concentration of NO3 minus. For spectator ions, we cannot use them in a rate equation. So the rate of change in NO3 minus over change in time would not work as a rate equation.